Welcome back. More now with my wide-ranging interview with former Defense Secretary and CIA Director Leon Panetta. It feels that the North Korea situation has become incredibly dangerous in the last few months. Uh, what's your take on, on, on this latest uh, provocation where you have North Korea uh, uh, launching the first intercontinental ballistic missile hidden from spy satellites until just before it was rolled into launch position and aimed into space? Maria, there's, uh, there's a number of uh, flashpoints in the world, dangerous flashpoints in the world, that uh, are confronting uh, our country and challenging our national security. But probably the most dangerous right now is North Korea, because they are developing uh, an ICBM, uh, and they are continuing to uh, try to develop a miniaturized uh, nuclear weapon. They have nuclear weapons. And so they're trying to develop a delivery system for those nuclear weapons. And it's obvious that they have the potential right now to be able to reach uh, not only the Pacific region, but obviously reach uh, even the United States. That's a direct threat to the national security of the United States. And for that reason, it's really important that we have to uh, develop a comprehensive strategy to deal with North Korea. Look, the principal strategy has to be containment and deterrence. Uh, that's the strategy you have to use with North Korea. And it involves both military and diplomatic efforts. On the military side, we've got to strengthen our presence uh, in that region. We've got to work with South Korea and Japan and other countries uh, in that region. We have to make sure that either overtly or covertly, we, can, uh, we have the capability to take down those missiles, uh, even when they're testing them, take them down. Uh, and in addition to that, we need diplomacy to try to uh, push China uh, to put pressure on North Korea to come to the negotiating table. All of that is what constitutes a, a, a firm strategy in dealing with North Korea. Meanwhile, there are obviously other hot spots in the world to discuss. Uh, the president just uh, last week signed the bill approving new sanctions against Russia. Was this the right move? I think the president did the right thing. I think the last thing you want to do is show Russia or the world that we're not unified with regards to policy dealing with Russia, dealing with Iran, dealing with North Korea. So I'm glad the president signed it. I would have preferred, frankly, that the president and the Congress would have worked together uh, and come to an agreement as to what steps should have been taken. But for whatever, whatever reason, that didn't happen. So I'm glad Congress acted, I'm glad they moved, and I'm glad that the president signed that bill. Have you ever seen an environment quite like this one where you don't have any conversation between the two parties, Secretary? I mean, when you were running the Defense Department, when you were running the CIA, even at OMB, there was a very different relationship between the Republicans and the Democrats. And the Republicans will say, look, we don't have any participation from the Democrats, not on health care, not on tax reform. Maybe they'll be there uh, on infrastructure. How does the country move forward with such divisiveness? Well, I, Maria, I think you've just touched on one of the fundamental problems that we're facing in our democracy. If you ask about national security, I think one of the big threats to national security is the dysfunction in Washington. Uh, the inability of Democrats and Republicans to sit down and work together on issues, the inability of the president and the leadership of the Congress to work together uh, on issues. Uh, and the result is, very frankly, that we're operating by crisis. I often tell the students at our Institute for Public Policy that in this country, uh, in a democracy, you operate either by leadership or by crisis. If leadership is there and willing to take the risks, associated with leadership, willing to sit down and work together to find solutions to problems. It takes risks. I understand that. But it's leadership. And that's what we elect uh, uh, to, to, to the Congress and, and to the White House. We, we hopefully elect people who are leaders who are willing to take those risks. But if that doesn't happen, we operate by crisis. And right now, frankly, almost on every front, we are dealing uh, with things by crisis. And the problem is, when you do that, you lose the trust of the American people in our system of governing. It's, and it's, that's dangerous. It's dangerous. It's unfortunate. Here we are having a, a, a debate about health care. It's really a fight that went on in, in Washington. And now they're talking about tax reform. I mean, you were President Bill Clinton's chief of staff.
Bill Clinton was a moderate. He wanted to take the country forward, and he wasn't afraid to move across the aisle and, and, and get some ideas from the right. It feels like the Democratic Party has been hijacked by the extreme left, by Barack Obama, Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders. How do you see it? I think both parties have been hijacked by the extremes. Uh, this, that, that's been the problem in terms of uh, the inability of the parties to work together is, uh, you know, the extremes have taken control of what's called the party base. And so as a result of that, uh, in, they feel in order to survive, they've got to cater to their extremes uh, as opposed to uh, uh, working to solve problems. Uh, when I was in Congress, you know, I've often said uh, I've seen Washington at its best and Washington at its worst. Uh, when I was there, Republicans and Democrats on both sides were working together on issues with the President of the United States. Well, when President uh, Reagan was in the White House, uh, Tip O'Neill uh, worked together with the president to accomplish exactly. a great deal. Yep. We got a lot of things done on Social Security, on the budget, on tax reform, yep. uh, so on immigration yep. reform. Yep. You're right. We were able to get things done, uh, and uh, that was good. That's, what the, that's why you're elected. Uh, today, uh, they, they, I frankly think uh, they're not sure whether governing is good politics. Well, let me tell you, governing is good politics. The American people want their elected representatives to solve the problems facing this country, period. And that's what they should do.